Welcome back everyone to the mod where I read very very quickly. I'm your host, Mr. Muggle Lover. But right now, did you know that we have a Globo Nacional de Terra del Fuego at the bottom of Argentina? I didn't. Anyways, uh, the DR4A. With the rise of home stereos, it's not uncommon to hear music blasting out of apartment buildings late into the night. For those of a more reserved nature who would fear drawing the eye of their neighbors, Sony's new DR4A headphones allow music to be enjoyed in complete privacy. Fully enclosed headphones provide excellent sound quality while ensuring that only the wearer hears anything, allowing them to be fully absorbed in the music without outside distractions and to listen to any genre of music without embarrassment or annoyance. It's especially valuable when divided societies like Guangdong, where playing Cantonese music in a Japanese neighborhood and vice versa carries a serious social stigma. Keep the tunes to yourself. Hey, look at that. Very nice. Blinded by victory. As, uh... Thunderous applause and heckling jeers engulf the legislative council chambers, Lee quietly scrutinized the faces of other tycoons in attendance. In the fleeting moments after a vote, they would often let the full degree of their emotions surface, valuable information for the next round in the ring. Uh, Morita, of course, was making no effort to hide his elation, laughing heartily and clapping mildly. Matsushi was clapping politely, the model of corporate politeis, even the moment of his own government success. And what of the opposition? Kamai wasn't much different from before the vote. Alternating between uh, braying about the wastefulness of the proposal and fuming caustically in his seat, even doing more of the latter ever since it had become clear that the vote was turning against him. Ibuka was as quiet as Matsushita, his face as impassive as Matsushita's, and his hands clapping slowly before he gathers on Raj Lee. Not seeing Ibuka uh, arm in arm with Kuma was surprising enough, but Lee could swear he could look almost accepting of the outcome. Uh, look at Ibuka run, tail between his legs, murder crowed. All that talk about bringing Guangdong down to mediocrity only for us to pull everyone upward, upwards instead. Serves him right. A KO Lee in tone, measuring his words, shouldn't we be more worried about Kamai? Ibuka doesn't seem too bothered by the vote, but Kamai is against us on principle. Marita said nothing, silently gloating about his victory. Yeah, that'll be Jason, look at that. We get society. That's a little different than I remember. Yeah, cool. We do have some white tea here. Keeps nice and warm and make sure I can go to sleep tonight. Well, at least has no caffeine. So we've got another vote done, which is fantastic, as we can see here, there's a lot of things going on. Human capital and investment ordinance become more centralized. So due to the amendment of public housing, it, uh, poverty rate will rapidly improve. Chung Kong gets into the seat. And then because of CK construction, poverty will begin to improve. Increases Chinese Union support, decreased Japanese expat support, dec decreased Japan's approval by 3%. Because of the Chinese contractors, you get more Chinese Union support, decreased Japanese expat support. Uh, more costs, of course. Lower Japanese approval, but increased China's approval. More infrastructure. And we get a thermal electric plan, as well as building slots because of the education focus. We get stratified, we replace stratified education with public education. We lose political power, get more stability. More cost, but more taxable population. Better academic and research facilities, monthly change. Increases Sony seats by one because we got local teachers. Increases Zuzhin Chinese support. Lose more <laughs> Japanese expat support. Lose Japan approval. Increase China's approval. And there's more stuff we can do here. But before we click on that, look at that. Holy crap. That's fantastic. Um, everything's improving except agriculture and admin efficiency for now. How much approval do we currently have um, with... Oh, we're still in Colombia. And product testing in Colombia. Do we, do, do we lose everything in Colombia? No, Colombia's right there. Huh. No, we've got our soldiers back. Um, so right now we're at 77%, which is very, very good. 89% so we're very good here and not bad. So I just want to make sure we get the full benefit of what we're doing here. 90% um, which will be lower, 71%, but the cap right now is 76%. Overall Chinese opinion increased by 2.5% and 1.5%, so that's 4% in total. Uh, we're going to hit the cap. It looks like we're probably going to hit the cap maybe a little bit. We could get more political power. Um, so let's hit the cap. It'll be okay in the end. Uh, we can close out of this. Actually, there we go. Research group turns. Uh, let's see. I read this one before, so you read this one again. Please go ahead. Back to normal Guangdong. Because of fulfilling five combat missions, we get two, two more seats. Uh, increased liquid reserves. There goes China's and Japan's approval, approval of us. And the PTRG profits will be uh, increased by real, percent, real GDP growth, 4%, and GDP growth, 5%. Okay, so that's the case. We're going to burn it anyway, so there you go. So now they're at 70, 80, 68%. How many more days do we have for this one? 12 days. Uh, let me do this one. Or are we at with the cap? 72%. Okay, so it's capped at 77%, which is not too bad. 83% is not great, but it's not terrible either. I'm going to reduce the corruption as much as possible on this one. 5 4%. I think we're okay with that. Nice. Which is not too bad. 
Deficit's not good. Twenty. Oh, look at that uh, GDP growth. Holy crap! Absolutely insane. So we have quite a few seats, which means we're going to get hit by another thing of corruption because we have 17 seats, 27 seats, 23 seats, minus 0.43. Holy, actually, it's supposed to be 0.49, but holy crud. Forced labor doesn't help us out. Um, reforming the civil service, 41 out of 100. 43 out of 100. What is this? 51? 41. What is this? 47. Shining Megapolis versus this. Provide affordable housing. Public housing to promote home ownership. A three great cities in the Pearl River Delta are proud symbols of Pan Asianism, but instead of the thriving exterior, their features such as housing shortages, overcrowding, and pollution. However, thanks to the recently passed Human or Capital Advancement Ordinance, we have the strength and will to reverse the situation. We're going to start a huge urban redevelopment project, and we can dedicate ourselves to being a shining metropolis on the hill. Can we actually get that done in time? I hope so, because then there's the 10 year housing plan. The Homeownership Scheme, HOS, is a subsidized sales public housing program managed by the Guangdong Housing Authority. We are established as part of the government's policy on public housing to achieve both the objective of stabilizing housing in downtown Pearl River Delta and providing minimum conditions, living conditions, within a decade. It also provides some ownership, home ownership opportunities for families who cannot afford to live in the private sector. Hmm. Let's see if we can get any extra votes for that. To revive the dead, the first court entered, and a crack emanated as the machine came to life. Adnan's ears were pierced by the screeching of the machine, and after a few moments of tampering with the dials, he managed to get the buzzing to halt. Noah's gave way to sounds before suddenly roaring to life once more. How happy is the one who says I am a Turk? Adnan jumped and clapped with glee. A Sony amplifier was sent directly to the small party office, and the Tunseli from the GHP's headquarters in Ankara. It arrived late and spent the last hour of the shift fidgeting with cables in an attempt to unscramble the machine's function. But he finally done it to astounding results. The sound was so pristine that he was taken aback. With that done, he left the office and marching back home to the rest of the day after an exhausting and tiresome shift. As morning juke uh, came anew, Adnan awoke to a city abuzz with a conspiracy. He passed by his neighbor, Samal, a bearded man whose build seemed intimidating for or not for his passionate eccentricity, with a new legend to tell for each day. Some were amusing, some were nonsensical, but Adnan would always listen. Today's legend struck him as extremely odd, even compared to the rest. Samal told him that Ghazi was still alive, uh, hidden somewhere here in Tunseli, and his voice could be heard emanating within the city. Adnan laughed and carried on with his strict work, but to surprise a small party office in Tunseli sat isolated and undisturbed, within the city's exterior was now surrounded by a sea of men. The truth suddenly came to him. He had forgotten to unplug the amplifier that last night, and sheer quality of the sound and deluded many into believing Atatrick himself was now walking among them. Hmm. With a gleeful smile formed on his face, Adnan took to the masses to clear his misconceptions. We can never revive the Ghazi, but we will forever carry his ideals. 29.75 square meters in one bathroom. Mertonly gazed out of the office window at the lights and colors of the bustling city, but they both knew the concrete heck that lay beneath the gutter. glitter. You do realize, Lee muttered, shoving his hands into his blazer pockets. There's a reason why minimum housing standards have gotten so much attention, right? I guess we can't expect it to be easy to give everyone a place to call home. Murray tilted his head upwards towards the dark sky for a moment. The public housing ordinance would require a number of radical provisions to make it a function uh, properly. And I can predict that this ordinance will have a hard time passing. If we don't want this ordinance to run directly into a brick wall and shatter, you might want to drop those provisions. Let's do it. Minimum housing standards. Sets out the mandatory conditions that must be met when providing housing. Reduces 5% seats. Add 5% seats. It's too radical. Hmm. Minimum housing standards. What do we have now? Public housing ordinance. Power to begin to improve. Hmm. Wait, so we add Sony seats. What type of supply? Well, we can't pass it as is. Let's see what it's like. Hey, that makes us get to 50. Um, because of minimum housing standards, increased Chinese government support, increased Chinese opinion, power to slowly improve. I have an efficiency against the worst, though. Ooh, that's not good. How many days do we have? 29 days? What type of supply? Of course, public, uh, building public housing in Guangdong would certainly solve the housing shortage, but one question is what form the main public housing should take. The most obvious way is to build a cheap but adequate form of public housing, primarily for Chinese laborers with deplorable living conditions. It's been an efficient way to solve the housing shortage, given that the ethnic Chinese make up the majority of Guangdong's population, and it's in line with the project goals. 
but the growing middle class is also looking for more satisfactory but affordable housing. And they want to live in more uh, than just minimum living conditions, so they demand comfortable housing, even if it's a bit expensive. A large-scale supply of housing aimed at this middle class would be satisfy them and raise the funds needed to build it, and, but it would not be welcomed by the workers who cannot afford it. Focus on ensuring minimum living conditions for workers? Focus on modern housing to cater to the middle class. Well, they're not quite capped there. They're really not capped. Um, middle class audience. I like that one the most. Worker audience. But I want more Chinese support because uh, there's 70, almost 80%. Where do you get that? And then what? Because after that one, we'll probably maybe do construct the arteries. The arteries of modern commerce was infrastructure, roads, rail, and electricity needed to harness all the energies of the people and land a maximum economic efficiency. Despite a level of development being restored in the cities via Japanese aid after the war, much of the countryside remains ill served by modern infrastructure. An easy criticism and source of resentment against Guangdong government, this must change Guangdong has become the all that Marie and Lee wanted it to become. Signal company is very nice. Even though we don't need them at all, but whatever. Attack helicopters, we need those, of course. Boop. Boop. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. Of course, we would like to crack down on corruption too, but we'll get there too. Um, I'll take that one. Political crest in New Granada, huh? So we gotta wait for that. 10 days, 15 days, huh? Um, well, I think I read this one last time, so if you read this one, please go ahead. Because GDP by 1%, it's not bad. Well, we don't need any more seats. We've got everything we need. Uh, so that last one did what? Uh, minimum housing standards, worker audience, probably gonna slowly improve. Uh, increase Chung Kong seats by 1 because of home ownership programs. More Chinese Zhujian support, poverty begin to slowly improve. Let's increase some of these seats by one. Poverty begin to slowly improve. Industrial expertise will slowly improve. GDP growth will slowly improve. We're going to worsen our admin efficiency. Is there a way to increase admin efficiency? 30%, my god. Still not enough, but still. Can we pass this thing first and then we'll do it? Yeah, we'll pass this thing first. Corporate paternalism. Paternalism, eh? Passes. Public housing ordinance to address Guangdong's dire housing shortages passed, and the ordinance sponsor Li Keqing and Chief Executive Marita Akeo were ecstatic. As the counting began, another victory was proven, and Marita Akeo was on the cloud nine. Amidst thunderous cheers from the Chung Kong delegation and applause from Sony delegation, Li Keqing came up behind Marita, patted him on the back, and said in the microphone in Japanese, This is great, we don't have literally people in the gutter anymore. Marita beamed with joy and they celebrated the victory together over a cool glass of water. Kamaya sat quietly, weighing the short term benefits of the ordinance against the long term consequences that would shake Hitachi to its core. Marita left Kamaya left alone with his slots and focused on his former colleague and the worst enemy, Masaharu Ibuka, as expected. Ibuka was complaining about wasting valuable coins on lowly laborers, and Marita Kyo didn't answer the defeated man's complaints. He walked out of let go with a sense of satisfaction, so exhausted by the passage of this ordinance that all his concern was to return to his own sanctuary and rest, just as he had provided sanctuary to so many others. Everyone needs a place to rest, so. Ten percent. That's getting pretty close. Sixty-five percent. It's not much, but still, because the cap here is what? It's very, very close to the cap. So let's spend it a little bit more. Goodwill. This is very good to do. Unless we do both. Increases. You know what? Uh, growth is what I like the most, obviously. But this is also very good. So we do this one. I'll do both. Why not? There you go. And then what? Efficient transport infrastructure, still to the movement of people and goods across all of Guangdong. Electrifying Guangdong. As much as I want to do this one, I think I'll do the other one. So if you know what this one, please go ahead, but efficient transport infrastructure. Marita has watched endless debates over piecemeal road and rail projects to do little more than connect each corporation's pet projects together on the map. The benefits delivered by the whole package of an efficiently designed transportation network, roads, bridges, railways, and waterways, is far more than those of its individual parts. As a centerpiece of this new network, Marita will construct a new international airport in Shenzhen, an underdeveloped region located between the three pearls with more than enough passenger and cargo capacity to keep Guangdong open for business and while investors for decades to come. The strongman's burden. 
And out of the sky above Marita, uh, his plane made it all seem so absurd. As if the heavens were laughing at him as he made the long flight from Xinjiang back to Guangdong. His mind replayed the meeting with the former Guangdong Army Chief of Staff, Saijima Alizo, the proctor of the newly established state of Manchuria, abolishing the trappings of monarchy for unvarnished autocracy with the former military man of Seb. Murder should have felt elation at this, but instead felt nothing but dread. A sane, rational, intelligent human being. In an important high office of a region so thoroughly abused by its neighbors, it might well be a renowned figure for Manchuria. And in doing so, it's about his for Guangdong, for a sane, rational, intelligent human being in an important high office of Guangdong's chief economic rival was the last thing they could have needed. Saijima's ambitions, as he had told Marito, kept echoing in his head even now. A renewed Manchuria, with a streamlined economy and a rebuilt industry, with fresh employment for its people, the potential for Manchukuo too, once more, outpaced Guangdong's fiscal growth was enough to make Marita's stomach churn. The reforms uh, that he and Lee were championing relied on outpacing the northern rival, and Manchuria had re-established with military industrial efficiency was only going to make the jobs that much more difficult. Time to upper game. Due to unexpected competition, we've got access to desperate academic decisions underneath uh, in, uh, the decisions here. Double overtime. Facts across Guangdong report that they're likely to miss production quotas that can easily be remedied by forcing extra overtime shifts on the workers. Solicited investment were struggling to meet growth goals set by the mainland, but we know of some unsavory figures who are interested in investing in Guangdong. We need that cash injection right now. Use underground distribution. All that matters is that our factories meet production quotas. No one ever said anything about how we ship uh, products from Guangdong inter internationally. Prime the pump. Spreading the word about a brand new tech firm that is waiting imminent approval to manufacture next generator equipment. Should get investors buy in? Well, until they realize we're about to sell our shares in it. Dump products in China. Some companies have been think having trouble selling out their stock. Thankfully, we bought a massive market in the ROC and a 40% loss still sounds a heck of a lot better than a 100% loss. Yeah, now we're good. Monarchy maintaining Laos, huh? A minor attempt tax hike, maybe. It hurt a growth slightly, but. 1949, part 3. Morning air. Atmosphere thick with lugubrious moans of businessmen who were, whose enterprises were falling down the chute in the garbage heap. Tremor of velocity hit up the suspense. It was quite the long way down. Lamp by himself thinking of the fire at the end of the tunnel, how it burned and feasts on the crumbling foundations of the province. And sun was faint on the horizon. <clears throat> Of a pale life filtering its way through the clouds, tumbling, tumbling, Lamb wiped the sweat from his brow and proceeded to jog to the workplace. A rough down water workshop recess in Kowloon's deepest crannies. After from his failure, Lamb sold everything he owned and declared bankruptcy. His associates disappeared for every day since the news broke. Lamb fastened a sweatband on his forehead and proceeded to, work for, to look for work in Port Shore again near the harbor. Backbreaking work, even worse than his days as a porter. I kept him alive, however, paying for his humble breakfast of porridge and salt fish. Lamb spent his nights moonlighting those days, guarding the warehouses of the rich Japanese that had come to make a profit for themselves in the province. Dirty, dirty rook, but it paid. And when the moon was full, he stared and wondered where the stars had hidden themselves within the folds of the universe. Back in Shinzan, the night was full of wonders. One night he heard the creak of a hinge as it swung open to the back of the warehouse. He drew his gun around in the corner to see a half a dozen burglars trying to make away with tailored equipment. The sight of those looms made Lamb see red for a moment. He raised his nambu on them. Back off, he shouted. Back off, and I might just let you live. Their arms shot upwards, dropping in their arms where they lay, yet the look on those faces became seared forever in Lamb's memory. Disgust, hate, a myriad of animosity for a man found walking, working with a foreign invader. What are you waiting for? He shouted again. Go on, get out of here. They scurried away, scampering over the fence and through the underbrush. Lamb felt a weight settle on his chest. They had to end. There had to be some other way. Where had all the stars gone hence? That man took leave of their senses. The Public Works Ordinance. The chief executive could only greenlight so many projects on the margins of the annual budget debate on the Legislative Council. Infrastructure projects and public works are measured in years of completion, not months, and if any of our, if our most ambitious plans for Guangdong are to be realized in full, we need to ask the Legislative Council to authorize multi-year development plans. That way, even Marita and Lee should fall from grace, their successes will still be required to work within the development blueprint left behind a volleyball form of institutional memory. That'll be good. Get 2.03 a day, nice. Go to the police boxes, huh? Good lower, increase control of the state, but it's not mandatory yet. Yeah, I do want this one. They get more growth. And yeah. And not necessarily free infrastructure, but it's it's something. Infrastructure, how pointless. Uh, army base. Eh. Prisons. Prisons aren't bad. Research speed. Where do they want this one? Momai? Oops, there you go. Lam Hao Soon, on the break once again, heard the Legislative Council was discussing something really rather boring. 
Some for which the stakes were quite low, the question of infrastructure with a view on Lincoln the three pros of outlying cities, this was of course well beneath his bonus. It was a police officer, not a bus driver, and so he was about to think about something else when a colleague of his interrupted him. Ah, so you only told me some time back, you have family out there, don't you ever think of going back? Mr. Lamb shook his head, I did it once, can't do it again for a good while, not worth to do it too often. The officer pressed further, why not? Let him reply, first my life's here now, second, it's not worth the trouble, one or two days driving and walking there, then another two days going back, it's workable, simple as. Not to mention, I simply don't have the vacation time lying around for that, if I took all my leave, I literally wouldn't have time to spend with them. All I can do is send them money. The officer nodded in sympathy and joined Lamb in getting back to work. Was Lamb work, he kept wondering whether something could be done about it. So if they pass it, more growth. Ab efficiency begins to improve, which is good, and become more centralized. Where else, else, else centralized are we? We're not in session yet, which is good. Um, look at that, it's going doing? Which is outpacing this, so once this is all these benefits are gone, we're going to tax it. Which does lead me to believe, like, if we tax it now, how much do we get? But then again, we need to save our political power to reduce corruption. We can do that one, I guess. Why not, you know? Qualified immunity, we're Takashima. We are discussing a Japanese citizen's crimes in Guangdong and I don't have the console to speak to. Nagano's face betrayed nothing as the sole of the shoes clacked against the floor. He came to a stop at the desk looking down at Morito Okeo. We're discussing accusations against the soldiers of Japan. This is my jurisdiction. The chief executive side turning his chair to face the general, all right. Your soldier of Japan was accused, he mocked quotation marks in the air, of beating a citizen in Guangdong senseless. Uh, we have witnessed testimony, man in the hospital, a uh, brewing, so general, where's your plan? Nagano scoffed. It's a matter of military discipline. We'll handle it, nobody else. I have more important things to attend to. With that, he turned away, marching to the door. General Case, I just can't let you sweep this under the rug while a man is in the hospital. A slam of the door was all the response that Marita Kao got. He sat in silence for a moment, then crumpled a random paper on the desk and hurled it into the trash can with a grunt and a clang. I almost paused, he sat back down. That's son of a gun. Paper, something to cover ourselves could be written, of course. Yeah. Trans representatives. Yeah, corruption only goes up by 0 0.7 a month. That's not bad. Hey, but happy December now, everybody. Should really be helping out poverty. By an extreme amount. I love it. After conventions, or conventions, Consul General, you must understand how unusual the uh, circumstances are behind my visit. Uh, Murray Dokeo began steepling his fingers on Song's desk. I've received a complaint from all of our major corporations about the present holdup of shipping all of them. Consul General's face darkened as he sat on his chair, brow burrowed and uh, furrowed in contemplation. I do not control the trade authority in China, of Chinese ports, Chief Executive. Perhaps the corporate leaders can directly petition the ports or the customs office. No, that won't do it all. These are trade expositions, Consul General. Which corporations cannot afford to miss? Which I cannot afford to miss, he thought. This is the very backbone of the economy we're discussing here. Simply cannot let them tell uh, to figure it out for themselves. Song so shrugged his shoulders and took his glasses off and set them down. I can only extend my deepest apologies right now, Chief Executive, and I mean it. I could send notice to the ports myself if that would work, but my hands are tied beyond that. Mm-hmm, uh, Marito Kao murmured, anger bubbling faster and louder than everywhere that reached him. And would your hands be so tied if I were involved with Japanese Consul General in this dispute? Will they be so reverent towards your customs? These are their profits, too. Uh, you know there's no need for that, Song responded immediately, leading me forward towards him. Please, Chief Executive, don't make such a mistake. I promise you that you won't stand much to gain more from honey, not vinegar. That'd be best darn good honey, then. Oh, crap. Let me afford to piss him off. Honestly, I don't want to lose... I'd rather lose it than decrease interest. Hmm. With everything we're doing, I think we'll be okay. We can do it by a little bit. The Brewery of Prosperity. Oh, it was a sunny day in Koshu. Uh, the smog relatively clear for once, and Lee Kashin was outdoors enjoying it. To be exact, he was personally observing the work of a work crew, paving a road that would connect Koshu to one of the outlying cities. His driver was bemused at the decision of it. The man was used to seeing his employer do strange things, but this took the cake for him. So much so, in fact, that he got to ask about it. With all due respect, Mr. Lee, please forget the question, but do you really want to be standing around here watching these people break their backs over the road? Lee smiled and laughed shortly. Well, yeah, I do want to be here. I'll help keep, keep, keep everyone honest. The workers still work hard under my watchful eye, and the supervisors, knowing just how little I tolerate abuse, will make sure they treat him fairly. The driver nodded in understanding, Lee continued. Besides, it's important for me to see the results of my plans. On the old road, it took two hours just to get here, to say nothing of the city on the other hand of the road. But when we're done here, three lanes on each side will be able to get here from Koshu in an hour. Goods people will be able to travel faster than ever. At this point, Lee smirked, and his voice became conspiratorial, and it's going to make us a heck of a lot of money. The driver still smirked at everyone at his employer's argument. Good point, sir. Time is money, after all. And then remaking human geography. 
Much of Guangdong's populace remains in rural villages and towns over land of no material value, living with minimal interference from the Guangdong government, except when the Ken Pai Tai conducts one of their infamous sweeps to the countryside, unfortunately. These villages and townships do not contribute to Guangdong's economy or government revenue, and worse serve as hubs for dissident activity. For the sake of economic advancement, and just for knowing what's going on in our territory, a government must find a way to incorporate these settlements in Morita's new society. A moment's peace. Is next. Getting dangerously close to the cap. Not for the Chinese, though. That's looking pretty good. Hey, look at that. Nice. Look at that. Fantastic. You know what? Just in case, do it twice. So next up, I don't like this, but this is even worse. Yeah. We need to get rid of the monthly corruption. If you excuse me, Chief Executive, I'll bring you some tea before we discuss the next point of business. Please. Song stepped out of the window. Stepped out without another word. Um, leaving Morita Akeo alone in his office. It wasn't long before his eyes began wandering, lightly tapping against the wooden floor. Loosely his face, his gaze fell upon the bookshelf to his left, filled with academic tomes, and then the window behind the Consul General's desk. Then the bookshelf to his right, filled with binders marked by neat lettering, then finally settling on the desk before him. Papers, folders, pictures, and some frame, one caught his eye in particular, a group of men in fatigue, smiling before some village or another. The Consul General's face was unmistakable. He's seen this picture before. It was facing him after all, and it wasn't the only one like that. A number of pictures from the man's soldiering days that found a home on shelves and windowsills. He'd never been brazen enough to ask about it, of course, but there were a few Chinese men with many fond memories of the 40s. And the two were nowhere near close enough to touch that raw of a nerve. Still, he couldn't have fought for the nationalists, and surely not the communists. A soldier Wang Jing Wei. Yeah, that must be it. How else could a Chinese man find the 40s remain in good graces of Nanjing? He was over what that calm, contemplative diplomat would be like in a war. It didn't seem like the tap fires, so everything with the Guangdong, Murida Kyo concluded there was more than Zong Zi. Zhang Zhiguang, the what meets the eye. The creak of the door and the measured footsteps snapped him out of his daze. There's more of Zhang Zhiguang than meets the eye, and may be able to learn more. Maybe. Eventually. Perhaps. Matsushita's request, Chief Executive uh, Morita. Watch Matsushita Masuharu's mouth move, his lips flapping about like a sheet of paper in the wind without the faintest interest in the actual words being said. Master Chita had pulled Marita's side after the morning cabinet meeting, promising just five minutes to discuss mutual concerns and launch into a massive sales pitch that was already running into the tenth minute. Ostensibly, it had been about marketing the public works and infrastructure ordinance to investors Master Chita had to face, face day in, day out. But Master Chita had prattled on about the lack of details in the project master list, losing Marita's attention instantly. Being given the same information as everyone else. And if Marita knew what to present, there was no way Master Chita didn't either. Of course, Matsushita had constantly offered the services of his surveyors and experts to conduct additional legwork on contract if Murdia was so inclined, or the expertise of his construction trends to provide costing and feasibility estimates on a planned project, but not for free. A bowl is never free. Matsushita wants to be mandated on some contracts, and so shall be. Now nah, we're good. Gambrabas this time, man. Still 30%. Nice. Deficit's getting better. Debt to GP ratio is going up, unfortunately, though. Um, what else we got? Ooh, economic check soon. This is how much we need. 37 billion? Well, we're at 40 and a half. Wow. It's how she's operating. And what exactly did you want to talk about? Chief Executive Morita sees up on, or sizes up Komai Kenichiro. See the opposite of Morita at the Chief Executive's desk? That's unusual for you to have anything to say to me outside of the regular meetings of the five companies. I will just let go business. Komai flashed a predatory smile as he's laid a cigarette. Without Morita's prompting, have you, how have you seen uh, to be having trouble getting your little ordinance over the line? Oh, nice of you noticed, Marita said flatly. No need to be polite with me, Marita. Come on, gave a mirthless chuckle as he finished, fixing Marita with a steely glare. The touch is willing to shoulder the construction costs associated with the initiative so long as we receive the lion's share of the contract to work. Good old fashioned favor trading, the bread and butter of Leco business. And we'll do it at Manchurian prices if you need extra incentive, Kamai added. If you look after my interests, then we can look after yours just as once. But despite what Kamai says, Marita thought absently he'd be giving Hotachi a shot in the arm in the longer term. A proposition that unsettled him as much as the prospect of a few more votes in the legislative council. Tachi is offering to take on the construction costs given their expertise in Manchuria, but it's Do you honestly trust him? No. Why would we? Look at that, 0.01%. That's good. That's very good. You know, I like to continue lowering uh, all that. But what about Fujitsu? I'm sure he'll come talk to us too. Maybe? Maybe not? <coughs> Happy New Year, everybody. It's 1938. And we got advancement in power efficiency technology. I think my light bulbs are a little brighter now. Nice. Keep working on that poverty, y'all. We don't need poor people here. National Fascist Party prevails in New Granada. Love that. Fantastic. Good job, Hitachi. I guess. The greatest story never told of you. Wonder about that. Please go right ahead. Huh. Ah, Burge Corrupt Officials. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Oh, no! We're only at 30% still. <sighs> no! 
give it a day or two. Passage of the Public Works and Infrastructure Ordinance. Today was an unusual day in the Legislative Council. No other adjective could describe a day on which Matt Sushita Masaharu, of all people, was going to be back to defend a state faction ordinance and see him doing a fairly darn good job of it. Ladies and gentlemen, let us try to understand the benefits that this proposal has for us and our companies, no matter what differences we have. Better infrastructure, be that power lines or roadways, is a no-brainer for keeping our factories and manufacturing empires profitable. This proposal is even more of a no-brainer in light of the fact that the state, and not us, will be put in the bill for its execution. Those that oppose it are frankly out of their minds. Ibuka Masu made this approval clear. If opposing this asinine proposal makes me lunatic, then tie me up in a straight jacket and take me to a mental hospital right after this meeting. Quite frankly, I just question exactly why Mr. Matsushita here is being so zealous, defending an deal from which Lee Kaching and Stanley Ho stand to benefit the most. At this point, the outrage shouts jeering and contentious laughter of not two, but three delegations, Sony Chong Kong, joined by Matsushita, and so did Ibuka with such force that he actually quailed and was forced to sit down. The book was very clear at the minority this time, and that brought a feeling of warmth and happiness in Marita's heart as he watched the votes come in, passing the ordinance by a decisive margin as the vote was entered. He resolved to invite Lee Ho and Matsushita to celebrate a dinner. Four of them and the families enjoyed themselves well that night. Look at all that. More growth. A crap ton of growth. And admin efficiency. It starts to improve, actually. Don't worry, be happy. Maybe you can. When Man, uh, Chan Man Hin arrived with his, with his family in Juka, the crowds were enormous. Now transformed to an enormous hot springs resort, the little huts and lean twos of the old village have been replaced with towering new hotel complexes. The air was thick with steam and so warm that Chan could feel his pores popping. Everyone linked hands so as to not get lost, and Chan led his family to their hotel, opened only a few months ago by Sony. He'd only booked one room for four of them him, his teenage brother, and his parents, and, but then. It, but he did not anticipate space to be an issue. He was spending most of the days lounging in the springs anyway. <clears throat> 12%, god dang. Uh, he left his family with the luggage in the lobby and went out to find the reception. Instead, he came across an awkward scene. The cleaner had accidentally knocked a guest's cup, uh, coffee cup off the one of the tables in the lobby and was apologizing profusely at the host's hotel manager screamed at her. One of the Juca natives, as the Chan recalled, the poor woman looked like she was about to crumple under the onslaught. They lost all their homes to the developers once the first tourists had started coming here. It couldn't have been easy to see their entire lives turn into servants for bathers. Before we could go down too far down that line of thought, Chan shut it off. It was, this was their holiday, and he was going to use the opportunity to relax. Besides, it wasn't like he could do anything for them anyways. Zoom had not a speck of dust on it. Incorporate the villagers. Li Kishin's arguments went out. Locate the factories close to the rural workers Guangdong. More Chinese government support. Increase the Chinese opinion, which is good. Increase the growth by 1%. Or 0.0%. Oh, but Marita Kao. Factories shall mainly line of the three pearls. Zuxin support. Ooh, you know what? As much as I want more growth, and I do... Let's take a look. See, 18 seats, 28 seats. We need more of those seats. Well, we got this much seats. Um, so we do this. You get six more seats. That's 47. 30 percent Sony seats. <clears throat> you get nine. I want to do this one. I really do. I want more opinion. Increase admin cost a little bit more, but it doesn't increase admin cost as much. I want this one, but if we do this one, we might actually be able to pass this by ourselves with no extra corruption, which I want. <sighs> Marie's preferred approach to the unincorporated villages and townships is a bit more imaginative. Find ways to make them more useful than they are otherwise. If these townships are unrecorded and not usable or valuable areas before, the government could propose relocating willing townships or portion of the residents therein closer to key sources or factory zones along the Pearl River at the state's expense. If they agree and we emphasize that unlike our predecessors, they could say well, they'll have jobs, electricity, and modern civilization. All in all, a new community of their own. Sure, that's not such a bad deal. And the Industrial Development Ordinance. Let's codify a new approach to the unincorporated villages and towns in the Guangdong's law so that we don't face an avalanche of criticism from the other corporations. Like so many vultures circling their next source of disposable bodies for the sweltering factories by passing their approach into law through the Legislative Council, we can hopefully end the practice of undocumented evictions and wholesale relocations of entire villages and the periodic cleanup required while still ensuring that we maximize use of our labor force in the name of industrial development. 1949, Part 4. Oh, look at that. Can we come over here yet? No, we can't. Sorry. <clears throat> Memories to start. I lived upriver, in a small village just outside Shenzhen a few years ago. The son of a farmer, I made my living hauling fish from the sea while my family clung to the memories of old mulberry orchards, uh, for which the empire's fought and bled. In the meantime, father sailed away to America, seeking and hoping there may be a little glory. The uncertainty of trans-Pacific relations has been that our correspondence was never stable. Some days I would come home with a box of envelopes stuck under my elbow. Some days, nothing. Mother was always anxious for him. I wonder how does she keep up with all this. In upriver, there are no, re no roads reached. So close to the rushing vein of the world, yet so far. Outside Japanese vehicles, broadcasting Cantonese and Japanese of propaganda in the new state, Wandong for new Pan-Asian dream, stronger together, China must do its part for the co prosperity sphere. Hackney platitudes staunchly on Russia. I remember those men in khaki uniforms, rifles and sabers shot and stabbed so these people compared the dream of dead visionaries from the safety of their vehicles. I scoffed and walked on. I was no better than they were, dressed in a tattered suit, hauling the empty briefcase, a grim destination into my mind. 
There's got to be another way, I had thought last night. I futilely checked the mail for the news for father. Uh, from father, nothing. No briefcases full of money sent from overseas can cure this pain and restlessness that I can feel. I chose this way. The winds of change has shaken me off those mulberry trees where the dreams of silk once hung. In times like these, cheer did nothing for a man. I had to live, I must keep on choosing. Outside the bus terminal, buildings the shape and color of faded cinder blocks arranged themselves into one enclosure. A guard check blinded both the entry and exit points. Police, a sign proclaimed, I must choose. One foot before the other, I stepped into the limbo of existence. This costume is quite a bit. This is looking pretty nice. And then uh, we want to invest in the future. As their industries come up to full speed with the willing contribution of the people, as the corporations reap the profits in spite of the new restrictions they face, we're not past the question what Guangdong should do with its profits. I also make use of the fruits of our labor today to ensure continued prosperity tomorrow. There are a number of proposals on the table on how to best reinvest your wealth to ensure the riches, flow of riches never stops. And eventually we do want to... Ooh, Matt Smith's in audio video technology. Does anyone know where the play button is on, on this thing? Very nice. Ah, good. I guess we still need to do this one too, huh? Oh, we can just pass it anyways. Uh, our ambitious labor standards ordinance has been passed, but the way to eat elephants is one bite at a time. Because the working standards were too miserable, it's like political suicide to have a clause in an ordinance to change this, however. The road to work or protection through uh, through further legislation remains open, and through ambitious le further legislation, we must address and add provisions that have not been included. Coddling peasants? It was a cloudy, rather smoggy day in Koshu. <clears throat> and Yasukawa Yoshiko was sticking out the Guantan government headquarters in search of a good story to break. It had been a slow day, so much so in fact that Yoshiko was only a short distance from throwing up her hands and heading home for the day when she overheard a few men complaining as they walked out of the building. It was a pair of legislative council members, both wearing lapel pens that Yoshiko suspected or indicated Fujitsu affiliation, and they were angry with the chief executive's recent plans, as most Fujitsu delegates tended to be most of the time. Yoshiko knew. One of them began to grouse his friend. Not good for nothing than the so-called chief executive. He and his liberal bleeding hearts are going to run us all out of business the moment the Manchurians come after us. Everyone in Guangdong who's even a 1% of one brain cell knows that we can't play nice with the common book if we want to fight Mountain Chukuo on its own terms. But there goes Marita, coddling peasants and hearing from out, hearing them out, rather than bringing Guangdong into the modern age. This diatribe piqued uh, Yoshiko's curiosity going to uh, a bulletin board on the front wall of the compound. She read that, uh, that the, day, the day's agenda focused on development in a certain town in Guangdong. She decided to pay a visit in the next week. The journalist's work never ceases. Still not bad. That could be worse. Honestly, we could do temp tax hike. Or temp tax cuts. But look at that. Hey. Oh, do we build that thing? Nice. More prisons? And Choshu? There you go. Build four of them. Keep building, y'all makes it better. Probably. I don't know. Nineteen sixty eight economic review. Get back to work. If you're gonna this, please go ahead. So we get three more seats. Cause Japs expat Zujin Japanese support. So we need at least forty six point two seven eight billion. Oh my god. Holy crap, that's a lot. Growth of ten percent. God the stock market doesn't even give me ten well sometimes it gives you ten percent still. Close. It's very close to the cap. No, we're close to the cap. So five percent Japanese approval. Let's get ninety-two percent. That's not bad. I can. I, we can work with that. That's a lot of seats. We're gonna get slammed hard though. Thousands of cinemas. Increases profitability by twenty percent. Increases government Chinese government support versus TV TVB's first broadcast. Growth goes up though. I like growth. I think we might do TVB's first broadcast. If you wonder about this one, please go ahead. Television industry is growing strong and is also widespread among the middle class, not the exclusive property of the wealthy. Entering the 1960s, Guangdong gained daily news broadcasts and TV drama programs appear to soothe countless public evenings. In response, the Guangdong administration stated the idea of establishing a completely independent private TV station, TVB. TV was something to take over every home. It's not as bad idea to get on with the times. Actually, we probably want to do this next, just so we get that profitability. We don't spend as much money, too. Get more growth, increase Japanese expat support, which is good. And Zujin might actually be eventually be maxed out, which is fine, but still. Now we're getting on political power for now. Um, yeah, we can do that, too, why not? Let go finances. So we're uh, almost literally maxed out. Ah, there we go. It's going to take us a while to get down here, but 
It's alright. It's probably worth it in the end. Uh, we are 28.05, 28.85, so th less than 3% away from getting rid of monthly corruption like that. The new industrial zones. It's partly cloudy in the newly established Sony Industrial Zone. Uh, one hour by car from Royal City, where Yoshi Yasukawa Yoshiko, escorted as always by the policeman she knew as Hayashi Kozen, was sitting down to interview the chief of the dormitories and the factory workers took their ease. The dormitory head was elaborating on the merits of his model. <clears throat> you see, Miss Yasukawa, young, unemployed, and edu uneducated men from the area are offered jobs and a place to stay while they work with Sony. We found this to be the only way to ensure sufficient, efficient returns as well as high enough Production volume can be assured. It's to us. It's a perfect balance between keeping Sony productive and giving people a job closer to home. You're just going out, but you know it's a problem. This sounds great, and all, but how's it different from these mammoth company dormitories down in Three Pearls? The man chuckled, nodded, in acknowledgement. That's a good question, Miss Yasukawa. It seems superficially similar, but there are a few big differences. First, they can go and come from their homes as they wish. Second, unlike in the Three Pearls, Sony's the real, only real employer for miles around, so everyone stays most of the time and gets paid for the eight hours of work. They help by the fact that Sony pays in eight hours, which the others pay for ten, so everyone wants to work for us, anyways. Makes sense. Yoshiko said her thanks and the interview, but still doubts lingered in her mind. She didn't question the purity of Sony and Murdy's intentions, but as compared to, say, Kamai, but that didn't all this amount to setting up a whole new company, towns, and dislocating people from their homes? Sure. It wasn't as bad as Suzuki's brutal method of uprooting entire villages, but it still struck as her as problematic. That doubt nodded at her for a good while. Nice. Look at that. Challengers. Oh crap, you want to this place go ahead. So many seats we have now. Is that 51? So not bad. 29 Sony seats, 13 Chung Kong, 8 Master Street on Fujitsu. So increase growth, having efficiency gets slightly better. Concentrate industry, more growth, Zushin Sport. Not bad. Product cycle, 68 days. So we can burn some of the support. We're maxed out for Zushin Sport, so. Increase liquid reserves. Please, decrease police control now. We're good. Hmm. What are the triads here? Decrease chance of government support. Increases police and triads of control. Decrease the Japanese support. And what's this one? Decrease Japanese expat support. Decrease police and triads control. That's all right. It's not great. We could do this one if we had enough support, but we don't. It's fine. Whatever. Master Shida, you book a one in. The meeting of the chief executive's cabinet had finished discussing government business early, nearly 10 minutes ago. Only to have Master Shida Masaharu grandstanding in Murray's office. You want to talk about industrial development? The easiest thing to do is talk about everyone else in the legislative council, Master Shida waved his arms grandly in the air, hoping that his actions would embellish his words. I really want the industrial development ordinance to help all Guangdong, and it'll be a lot easier to do when everyone's on board. You made your point, Lee Groan, stealing a look at his wristwatch. For the last 10 minutes, you've made nothing but that point. I'm telling you, we'll take it under advisement. This shouldn't be a hard decision, Matsushita shot back. Both Matsushita and Fujitsu are offering help. All I have to do is cut us in, or is that too dangerous to your bottom line? The room fell so icily silent after Matsushita's remarks, having laid bare the underlying visions or divisions within Morita's cabinet. Not that there was very difficult when businesses or business was politics and vice versa. Cut Matsushita and Ibuka in. Get, stand a better chance of getting this pass if we all get all the companies on board. Remove concentrated industry? No. We don't need them. 20%. I do decrease corruption, but... Hey, it's actually going down now. It's pretty good. Hitachi's off, and what exactly did you want to talk about? Chief Executive Marita size up Kilma Kenichiro. Seated opposite Marita at the Chief Executive's desk. It's unusual for you to have anything to say to me outside of the regular meetings of the, uh, the five companies. Um, uh, I read this one earlier in this episode, so if you need this one, please go ahead. There you go. 60% unrolled. Oh, come on. This is crud. Fine. 16%? Not great. Fine. We'll do this one then. Help lower corruption even more. Hey, it gives more political power. Monthly Chinese government support. Real GDP growth, which is good. True fashion sticker with the party. Wasn't that again? Didn't they just do that? Minus 0.49. That's not good enough. Hello? What's going on down here? Enrique Gomez Otardo. Anything else super different? Mm, not really, no. Passage of the Industrial Development Ordinance. The debate on the Industrial Development Ordinance began with a Jeremiah by Kemal Kenichiro. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the act of this chief executive is folly piled upon folly and mentally deficient and disastrous innovation. It makes absolutely no sense whatever whatsoever that we others should focus be forced to foot the bill for the asinine sorting program of taking industry to the rural areas. Economies of scale and the mechanics are self-evident to anyone with a fifth of a brain cell, so then if the chief executive is company the assorted not native hanger-ons wish to indulge the patronizing, overly liberal goodness of their hearts, let them do it on their own dime with my blessing and encouragement. This dis discourse was Kamai's first full-throated attack on virtually everything Morita had endorsed in the proposed ordinance, but it didn't get the reaction that Kamai had clearly hoped for. Only Buka's men were agreeing, and it's to prevent his own men from going out in line with their wishes, Matsushita stood to counter Kamai's points. The previous chief executives made the stupid decision of leaving rural towns and villages with no natural resources to exploit undeveloped, and even though there was perfectly good labor waiting to be put to use. What well, Mr. Komai does remember in his old age is that you can only fit so many uh, niboshoni, uh, niboshi in this jar and so many factories and workers on three pearls. And now, Messer is Komai, and uh, Ibuka wanted to keep stuffing more workers and other superstructures. They can do so with my blessing. I, on the other hand, prefer a bit more open space to work with. Morita Akeo and Lika Shing joined the three delegations and laughed and applause as the voting began. The ordinance passed some days later, when Matsushita had to go a few hours without lunch. Morita gave him a bit a bag of niboshi. Matsushita took a shook his head and chuckled in amusement. Nice. Going to cost us even more, man. Oh my god. Oh man. Cost, 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 cost. Labor Relations Ordinance. The purpose of this ordinance is to set up a Labor Relations Committee to reduce labor disputes and make them nonviolent. But there are several provisions for protecting workers, and it'll be an opportunity to pick up policies and pledges that we haven't included. Maybe if we pass it. Still, 54 seats is very good. And we can do this one too. So if you do this one again, this is an old one we could have done. Please go right ahead. And we can maybe get another two here too. Ooh, that'd be good. Which we probably actually want to read as well. Yay! Finally! Uh, the minimum wage question. While well, Suzuki's attempt to improve working conditions via the revised labor standards ordinance was commendable, extreme poverty remains a fact of life for countless thousands across Guang down by the laborers' toil. The simple fact of life is that wages are far beneath the rising cost of living and basic necessities in Guangdong's expanding cities. Uh, while dwindling opportunities in the rural areas that aren't that aren't linked to the closest economies of corporate towns or mining settlements could consign thousands to mere subsistence. Both for the people's sake and for leveling the playing field across the corporations in terms of cost, we're formally proposed an institute of minimum wage in Guangdong, and also that the survival of the masses is no longer in doubt, if not a good, for a good life. The situation proves a family downwind from the factory in Ro Guangdong noticed that the air was cleaner for once in their lives. Part of that, that may have been because the smoke stacks from the nearby factory had stopped smoking nearly as much. Her grandfather said it hadn't been like, like this since the days of the old republic when Mao Zedong and Chiang Kai shek fought among each other for the control of the nation, not concerning themselves with the terrible threat to their east. People were able to go about their daily business, to work, grushing, and so on, without becoming winded, running out of breath, or having to take prolonged rest. The family felt unmitigated joy seeing this. Oh, there's going to be more corruption here, too. That's not good. Until one of their neighbors, an older gentleman, began to cough. Uh, blood uncontrollably on the street, like he used to back when the uh, skies were dirtier. Though things were improving, alas, uh, that improvement came too late for many, and medical care was still vastly insufficient. So the family tempered with their enthusiasm and moved on. One takes what good one can get. And now, a question of work hours. Oh, yeah. During normal times of Guantong's factories, laborers worked 10 hour shifts across two shifts. In busy periods, people worked 8 hour shifts across three shifts without breaks. In our offices, workers are effectively on call at all hours, and holding it back from returning home for fear of earning the ire of the manager after a missed call. It's clear that this is exhausting, contributing both to worker dissatisfaction and to greater workplace accident rates, neither of which will do anything for productivity. We'll introduce a novel concept of taking breaks and limiting work hours of uh, both machines and people to rest and recuperate. Hey, look at this one. Nice. That's fantastic. Good. That's ahead of time. Ahead of time. There, do that because you can. Here, do that. Really because you can. Update anti tank. Good. Put another one we had updated stuff. It's fine. Whatever. Keep building up those prisons. We love prisons. Recall 1955 February. God dang it. Why is this not done yet? Gongbuli, or Bui, Stanley Ho, Marita Kale, and Li Kishing clinked their cops together and the noise blending seamlessly into the cacophony of the crowd of Irin Wan Chai. Even as the Lunar New Year shut down Hong Kong, there were still a few establishments open, those catering to the Japanese who didn't celebrate, and those catering to everyone else. Ooh, it's going back up. That's not good. The latter suited. Uh, the three of them just fine, not least because they did not want for nourishment, and an endless stream of well wishers and passerbys would come by and congratulate Lee, clapping him on the shores with uh, holding newspapers that showed Lee's beaming face and a TR-56 transistor radio and an outstretched hand, the first transistor radio in Guangdong. 
even if the one-year-old Sonus Li Electronics Company hadn't been the first to release a transistor radio in the sphere, that was Fujitsu to fall by Masashida. They've been able to rush Marita's design to Guangdong shelves, with Li's factory working at a full tilt to supply Stanley Ho's network of runners. And promised quality and affordable price, even the poor Chinese in Zhujian were quick to embrace the future. As the facilities hit a lull, Li filled Marita's cut while bowing his head. I should apologize without your ideas, I couldn't have come this far. Compared to what I owe you, it's nothing, Marita shook his head. But honestly, even as his Cantonese grew more confident, now many would take a chance on a Japanese man dying in the streets. When Kishin told me that this could be good money, why would I take the risk? Stanley chortled, puffing a cigarette with a cocky grin. Business is in her blood, now you understand that. Now you're one of us. Drink up. I'm meeting at Fujitsu. It was a relatively pleasant day outside Fujitsu's Koshu offices. The sky was blue, and it was compared to the three of smog for once. All more unfortunate than that Ibuka and his guest, Kumaki and Ichiro, far from enjoying the weather, were instead consumed with the quiet rage of the antics of Marita Akeo and Lee Kishin. Ibuka scoffed at the displeasure after hearing Kumaki's recounting of Marita's and Lee's plans and went off on a tirade. This occurs bleeding hearts are trying to drag the rest of Guangdong to the level. They can't complete a merit the way anyone in the right mind would do it. They'll just force us all to pay for the mistakes. And the worst of all is that the cursed Masashita, acting like a human weather vane and looking out for himself as always, will go along with the nonsense. Smile and leave Kumai's face. Why don't you just ignore the law if it's such nonsense? Ibuka huffed in anger. Don't you remember that our companies here are still subject to the Lutko? This is a Manchuko where the state would back you up the whole way. Now the smile left Kumai's face and began to bristle. As a response, this sound was more testy. I advise you to take note that this initiative of theirs hasn't been passed through the council yet. So it's perfectly <clears throat> valid to ignore it for the foreseeable future. If Buka hadn't thought of that, it's a pretty good point, all things considered. After taking a brief moment to consider the implications, you reach a conclusion. All right, that works. Let's do it. So we want to do this one too. So we do that one. We'll do this one. I want to go back down there. This one need it. No ordinances. Public transport, huh? Well, that would be bad. But that's what we get to do. You need to make money, or this. So let's say how should you best prepare Guangdong's future? Debts and taxes. Spend money. We must raise money from those who have means to pay. Maybe controversial for a low benefit if we fail. Think carefully about our next choice. Guangdong Future Fund. Guangdong Future Fund. Grow our financial resources so that we may have plenty in the future for time of need. Increase the seeds by one. Corporate benefactors. Those with the means should be provided their applications to the public. Public fi uh, finance order. Investment in it for its people. Increase liquid reserves. Huh. Through soup kitchens and schools. The work hour matter. Um, well, let's go to this one next. Uh, Wong Ho Fai, known to his Japanese co workers and superiors as Ishida Shintaro, groaned in displeasure by another nuisance of an application form appeared at the top of the ream of paper that sat on his desk at the Hong Kong Labor Bureau all day, every day of the darn week. This time was yet another one of those applications from the company seeking permission to extend its working hours, citing purposes ex essential to the continued functioning of her business as most of them tended to do. Dealing with these kinds of forms that become part of Whole Fi's new reality. After the decree from the Legislative Council that the labor rules prevented daily work shifts longer than eight hours would be strictly enforced, countless firms, mostly Japanese, but a few Zhujian firms too here and there, had sent in forms to the Labor Bureau requesting permission to grandfather their work hours and timing in. Of course, the latest form, just like virtually all others before, was utter rubbish, and so we rejected it as such. As Whole Fi stamped the uh, mark, <coughs> uh, stamped the stamp marked. Kiaka rejected on the form. He noted the dry humor that this stood or a very little chance of being followed. All the stamp would do, Hofi knew, would put the offender on notice and that they were acting in contravention of the law. Not like that it would make much difference, of course. Um, <clears throat> getting that to happen would require the let go to get up and pass an actual law. Wong Hofi had been in Guangdong for more than enough time to know there's no hope of something like that ever happening. Such good things happen anywhere but here, he thought. So, right now, we still have 50 votes. Fantastic. So, with this, we would replace illegal with state controlled uh, labor relations. Better mother poverty, industrial expertise. Uh, what does this do? Decrease Japs expat support, which is normal. Increase Zhujian and Chinese support. Because of pollution standards, healthcare gets better. More uh, support from Zhujian and Chinese again. Because of minimum wage, uh, need to consumer goods goes up. But better poverty and uh, monthly industrial expertise change. Poverty begin to improve as well. More <laughs> Zhujian and Chinese support. And because of reduced work hours, we get unlimited workday with 14-hour workday. Harsh factory output, consumer goods needs, and yeah, more stability. And there's so, other stuff that I can't read. Not because I can't read, I just can't see it. Nice. Culture corruption, the, money, the, the finest money can buy. Nice. Minus 0.52, that's not good enough. 1951, part one. Two years in the forest, now I patrol through neon lit streets uh, as the city breathed in smokestack, jutting up from the factory beyond the city limits. 
Lamb disdained his uniform. The badge and insignia marked him like a stranger in his own homeland. So it was better than begging for food in the slums of uh, Kowloon, while his patrol in the night marked alleyways. A stack of boxes burst outwards to reveal a profile of a man with a knapsack full of goods on his back. Shouts rang forth from behind the man. Stop him, a voice said, heaving with exhaustion. He's got my thing. Lamb sprang into action. The security jobs he worked for in two years prior were beginning to pay off. He felt his legs full and his body bolt forward as an instinctive cry rose from his throat. Stop right there, as he said. Stop in the name of the law. The man saw him and turned to run into the walls to see that he's maids of apartments, living spaces, stores, and open air stalls. Lamb gave the chase, hurtling through counter laden with street food, elbowing past the crowds and shimming through the edges formed when the groups intermingled and separated. The thief was quick, but Lamb was steadier, better built. The man uh, looked back to see Lamb getting on him and just between gas of exaltation, before returning with his gaze just in time to slam against a porter carrying boxes of heavy merchandise. He collapsed. In the meantime, Lamb pulled the handcuffs from his belt and locked the man's wrist in them. You are under arrest, he said. You have the right to remain silent. He chanted the thief's rights in both Cantonese and Japanese. Lamb brought the man in the knapsack back to the alleyway. The owner gave him an unctuous thanks, all in fluent Japanese. He insisted on knowing Lamb's name. Patrolman Hayashi, he said, reluctantly giving away his Japanese name. You're welcome. Now I have to get back to the precinct. Got to bring this guy in for questioning. Waving the owner off, he hauled the criminal back to the station handcuffs and complaints at all. He was thankful. So easier than some other nights. Decreases something's like a cease by one. Interesting. Well, let's take a look see. Target markets. We did Turkey last time. I guess we're going to go to Iberia. Boop. And. Boop. So, where are we at? So, right now, we're maxed out. We can. Uh, honestly, we can cut some of the Chinese support as well as Zhujin support. Which is weird for us to say. So, we'll do them. Zhujin. These guys. Because right now, we have lower. Quality than interest. There you go. We'll do that one too. There you go. We're really gonna nail this one. There you go. Nice. So we'll do this one next. I'm not sure which one we want to do. Debts and taxes. Hmm. Hmm. Public finance ordinance. Why do we not do our focus? Oh, I must have passed it. Oh, we're waiting to vote, vote for it. We got 16 days. If we get 50 votes, it's fine. Well, in the meantime, I guess we'll do this one next, yeah? Let's see in the future. Then what? The Guangdong Future Fund. An investment in the people. I like that. Or corporate benefactors. Through soup kitchens and schools. Hmm. So much, I think I want to try that. Guangdong Future Fund? Honestly, it would be very good for us to do. In future time of need. Hmm. Guangdong remains a state where major corporations will control all others of economic power. Much as we've tried to expand the role of the state in the lives of the people, to have something that would dilute the power of the corporations of financial matters by creating an independent source of wealth or credit to the government would safe, uh, face stiff opposition. It would be necessarily of a smaller scale than anything we would hope for. We could curry favor of the corporates and the delegates in the legislative council by giving them a larger role to play in the future of Guangdong and the economy, still in the wallets, as if it were, for the benefit of future generations. Well, the proper way to use our accrued fiscal surpluses is to put them use in the markets, growing a rainy day fund when the economic cycle inevitably turns against us. We'll create an asset management fund with the express mandate of managing growing accumulated surpluses so that the emergency funds can be available to the government when needed, subject to the oversight of the Legislative Council. This concept, a sovereign wealth fund, might rankle some of the corporates the wrong way as it gives the government an independent source of financial power that they cannot directly control, but conceptually bound and sound and unlikely to impose any criminal burden to them either. Though it would necessarily be of a smaller scale than anything we would hope for. So this is what you have to do if you fail everything else. 
This one is for like the future. This is the one, the major one for the future, and this one's like uh, a little bit in between. I mean, this is a lesser one of this one. Do I at least look generous? Because I've done this one before. So, you know what? As much as I, I want to do this one really badly, if I ever do this again, I will go, oh, I'll have to go this way. But because I really want, I really want us to do this one. The labor relations ordinance passes. A new dawn for the labor in Guangdong is done as the labor relations ordinance. The most controversial piece of legislation proposed by Chief Executive Morita was passed by the strongest opposition imaginable from Fujitsu's Masuharu, Haru, Ibuka, and Hitachi. As the vote came to a close, Masaharu Ibuka launched a last-ditch speech to stop the bill. Ladies and gentlemen, is it right for a chief executive to strip away all the rights of other executives and impose terrible socialism? Marita has plundered us and given us everything we can, and now he wants to take away our sovereignty. Such an idea is destructive, reckless, and disastrous. Businesses in Guangdong are so prospering because they are free from high-handed high interference of the government because they are free from socialism as in sirens. Is this idiot commie chief executive confessing that he's a communist? Marita stood up and uh, retorted firmly. What Mr. Ibuka is forgetting is that the pointless labor disputes are exhausting and time-consuming, not just for Hong Kong and Sony, but for every company in Guangdong. I hope you remember how much of a financial and mental burden strikes, lockouts, and repression are. Mr. Ibuka also said that my action was a self-confessed communist. He doesn't seem to know what you can never kill an idea, and if you can't get rid of it, it's best to make it at least harmful way possible, so Mr. Ibuka should really get a grip on the facts, on the facts before making such a ramp. The vote was taken amidst disdainful laughter from Sony and Chung Kong delegates and an odd look from the Masashita camp. Murder's ambitious plan, uh, ordinance passed. Unthinkable victory. <sighs> go big or go home. And this is just not as much. Through soup kitchens and schools. All is not freely given. Healthcare begins to improve. But this. I don't know. Begin to improve. Rapidly improve and improve versus stability. Which is nice, don't get me wrong. Increase liquid reserves, but get more corruption, which doesn't matter. You know what? I think I'm just going to do this one anyways. Screw it. We're going to do that one. What work do we do it? Yeah, as much as I want to do this one, go big or go home. Yeah, I'll probably do this one. We're going to decrease our own seats. We're going to penalize ourselves. Why not? Ah, uh, it's good. Where are we at for uh, this? Maxed out. Maxed out. Jesus Christ, that's weird. It's very weird to see. So right now we would be at what? 10% interest, 673. Honestly. You can do that one too. Let me do this one up here too. Move white collar workers to QA. $1.5 billion is not great. Debt GDP ratio is going up. But where do we get it? I'm going to rapidly improve everything as best we can. Today, the Chief Executive, Marita Keo, and two of his close associates, Masashita Masaharu and Li Kaxing, were conferring on the matter what could be more done for the Guangdong economy. Everyone agreed that money was needed to see that through. But they disagreed over at times vigorously with how to get a hold of it. Li argued that bonds should be issued as a stepping stone towards forming a government that functioned less like a board and more like a leadership of a state. <clears throat> Marita demurred and changed the topic. Then he suggested that whatever savings exist in the government should be immediately reinvested so that the surplus could be grown to pay for new programs. Masashita, on the other hand, argued for a different approach. Knowing the anger of the corporate and investor classes towards the government, he suggested that reliance on corporate donations might be a better idea than taxes. At this point, Masashita's tone became conspiratorial as he said that he himself would be willing to contribute, provided he got to cut whatever came after. Marita stroked his chin, contemplated the options in front of him. The decision was his. Hmm. So this is more of a Matsushita route. Corporate donations, huh? This is the one we should really... This is the one we should probably do. God dang it. Can we cancel this one? Yeah, okay, fine. I really want to increase... Uh, really decrease poverty as fast as possible, but... Fine. Matsushita was actually one of the donations. Given the government some discretion to do what it wants with the money and the future fund, we choose to invest in the people's Guangdong. To prove the lives of the populace through means tested, return generating programs that ensure Guangdong is prepared for the challenges of tomorrow, 
to improve the lives of the people as they lay the foundations for a stronger, more resilient workforce in the future, and to address the desperation and poverty so that so often draws them to radicalism. All shall go well. More corruption, that's fine. Guangdong Future Fund? Yeah, yeah, that's probably what we're going to have to do in the end, but I think I might end it there, and we'll probably start with that one next. And uh, more corruption every month, not idea, but it is what it is. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we're going to get a lot of sales from our Trinitron, or Trinitron television. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.